Howdy folks, welcome back to Archangel RC. I'd like to ask you a question. Have you ever wondered if you can use the C Uni RC7 system with more than two cameras? Yeah, I know, very common question. Everybody wonders that day and night. The other day a lady stopped me on the street even in panic, crying, tearing her hair out after losing sleep for over a week, wondering how that would work out. But fret not, I am here to save you all and give you a definitive answer. And that answer is a resounding yes. But before we dive into how to do it, I'd like to quickly remind you that should you wish to support this channel, you can become a channel member, a Patreon supporter and use any of the affiliate links in the video description below for your shopping needs. It won't cost you more, but it will help me out. And now, on to the good stuff. You might be wondering how we're going to connect more than two cameras to the Uni RC7 Air unit which only has two inputs and the answer is the CFPV hub which is essentially a network switch. The LAN 2 port on the Air unit gets the ZR10 gimbal so I connected the FPV hub to the other LAN port. However, before we can move on we're going to have to make sure that all cameras have different IP addresses else this won't work. For the ZR10 gimbal, changing the IP address is as easy as connecting the USB-C cable to it, plugging it into the computer, starting the C Assistant app, going to the Gimbal Config tab and changing the last number in the IP config field from 25 to something else. In my case, I have already changed it to 26 since I've been using two cameras with this system for a while now. Then click save and the gimbal is set. Since I will be using two R1M cameras, one of them can keep its factory IP address which ends in 25 but the other one will need to have it changed. Sadly the R1M camera does not have a convenient USB-C connection so the IP address change needs to be done via the SD card. The camera I will be adding to my setup however has a pretty old firmware so this will need to be updated before we can change the IP address else it can't be done. For instructions how to update the firmware on the R1M refer to the user manual. If the update has been successful or your camera is simply sporting an up to date firmware you should see two files in the SD card when you put it in your computer. Cur IP text and set IP text. I hope the names are pretty self explanatory here. Cur IP text has the camera's current IP address so don't touch that one. Go to the set IP text file and enter the new IP address that you want the camera to have. In my case I will set it to 192.168.144.27. Save the file, remove the SD card from the computer and put it back in the camera. Power the camera and wait a few minutes after which power it off, put the SD card back in the computer and make sure the new IP address is now showing accurately in the cur IP text file which means that the camera has updated its IP address so we can now proceed to testing the three camera setup. Basically now the addresses are as follows. One of the R1M cameras has an IP address that ends in 25 which is the factory default. The ZR10 gimbals ends in 26 and the second R1M camera's address now ends in 27. With all this sorted out I plug the two R1M cameras in the LAN ports on the CFPV hub and power the system. In the UniGCS app I had to add the address of the new camera before I could use it since the stock R1M selection from the drop down has the default IP address which ends in 25 and we changed it to 27. In the camera B slot I enabled the R1M's feed, the one with the factory IP address but also made sure to rotate the gimbal to point at something different so it wouldn't be showing the same view as the other cameras which will make it easy to follow which camera's feed is visible. The second R1M will now take the place of the first one so we enter the RTSP address here making sure to end it in 25. Enter the port number and checking the R1M's user manual shows us that its stream name is main.264. So add that at the end there and click OK. And lo and behold, a third camera has entered the mix. And you know it's a third camera because the other R1M is glued to the nose of the plane and it's not very easy to remove. So there you have it. Not difficult to do at all. Yes, you can't really see all three feeds together, but you can watch two of them together and then swap the third one in when you need it. Or just swap between the three cameras so you don't wait down the data link. 
I find this pretty fascinating, so we'll have to figure out where to mount the third camera. Perhaps it should have a better view of the plane itself or a view of the gimbal, so I can keep an eye on it during flight. This goes a long way towards showing you just how capable and versatile this system is. This is definitely some impressive stuff. There are mini network switches with more than two ports, so potentially you can go crazy with cameras pointing in every direction or connecting a whole host of other IP enabled gear for all kinds of purposes. The possibilities truly are endless. But there is something else that I wanted to touch upon here and a fair few of you have been waiting for it. The iNav compatibility. Recently I received a SpeedyB F405 Wing Mini controller so I thought it would be a good platform to test this with. I flashed it with iNav 8, went into the settings and enabled Mavlink on two ports. One will be for the OSD overlay on the UniGCS app and the other for the gimbal since it also uses Mavlink. I assembled the flight controller stack, soldered all the necessary wires and put it in the MFE Hero. I plugged the necessary stuff to the Uni RC7 air unit and plugged the gimbal's Mavlink cable into the SpeedyB. I powered the system, opened the UniGCS app on the radio and nothing. Waited and waited and waited, but the OSD overlay never did update with actual data. Plus, if you notice up here, the gimbal's Mavlink Fusion icon was also missing, which means that iNav's Mavlink implementation is somehow different from the one on ArduPilot, or at the very least, it outputs the data differently, which apparently is enough even for the OSD overlay not to be operational. I did talk to C about it, and they said that at this time there is no support for iNav's Mavlink, but they are positive that they will be able to add compatibility for this at some later time. And you can be sure that I will be here to announce and test it, so make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and consider also the bell so you can be notified when new videos are released. Might also give it a thumbs up while you're at it. A huge thank you to my YouTube members, Patreon supporters, and in general anyone who is supporting this channel. Fly safe, and I will see you in the next one.